Alrighty, I'm in the backyard with the garden. Gonna pick a few black eyed peas here that I have going. That one's a little small. But you can see there, I got a lot to pick. Had a good crop this, this summer. So let me get a few of these together. Well, hello everyone. It's been a long time since I've been out at the post. And we are at a park near my home. It's a few miles from my house, but it's called Coleman's Landing. It's right next to the, the Lake Kissimmee. I don't know if you can see the lake that's way out there. And you saw me uh, pick some black eyed peas from my garden. Thought I would come out here and do a little cooking video with you. It's a little bit too hot to uh, have a campfire here in Florida. It's uh, it's it's just not going to be fun to do that. So have here my uh, my old Coleman stove, and I brought out today my. Uh, Polish bread bag and inside here I got my Polish canteen and mess kit. Let's see if we can get that in there. I'm not really a good shot, but you'll see it here in a minute. We're gonna cook up some black eyed peas with some spam and then another little thing too. Might even do a little bit of cornbread. So my dad is here with me. He's uh he's over there. He's setting up a ham radio antenna, 20 meter, 20 meter band. We'll see if we can get some, some distance contacts. So sit back and enjoy my video. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take our Polish mess kit here, take the cup off, and I've used this once in one other video. I'll link that. Uh, video up here so you can see it and i'm going to have to shell all these black eyed peas here for us because i picked them just a few minutes ago out of the garden so i'm just going to open these up and shell them right into the mess kit here bunch of black eyed peas so So give me just a few moments here. We're going to shell this bag here of peas in there and get started. All right, so this is what we got here. Shell black eyed peas. I'm going to add some more stuff to it. Some onion, green pepper, and other things. Alrighty, so I had to turn the stove here a little bit because of the wind, but here goes the vegetables. I'm going to try to eyeball this. All oh, this green pepper. Green peppers are all in there. Here's some garlic. Maybe a little bit more onion. kind of save the rest and reserve see if I need it or not next is spam so we're gonna be using some spam light today to put in there with the black eyed peas and I bumped the tripod sorry about that some of that spam goodness and I I eat the light because uh, it's probably better for me. I, matter of fact, I know it's better. So let's get this thing a good. Let's see. See if we can cut this up some. There's air boats over here. 
running at the lake over there. That's what that noise is, along with my my dad on the ham radio over here behind me, which I'll try to get some shots of. I'm just kind of winging this. I'm just going to kind of cube it up like this, turn to pieces that will cook up okay in the pot. There we go. Let's see if we can get them into the pot without spilling them. We don't want to lose any of this spam goodness. I thought I had a little bit more black eyed peas than, than I did, but, but we can make up for it with some extra spam and stuff. I've got these onions I can add in too. Let's, we're going to need to add some water. Let's add some water here. My dad's on the radio behind me making some contacts sounds like all right let's get this thing going about 50 pumps it's a great big tank this this stove was made from 50 1950 to 53 and there's a there's a video of me redoing this a couple videos actually I'll put a link in the description now Not bad for a stove made between 1950 and 53. So we gotta let her warm up a little bit. Gets this generator hot right here that's uh, underneath here, that pipe right there. And it helps to atomize the fuel. So I think we're good. Let me get back here. Turn this handle downward now. And now it's pulling the liquid fuel from the tank now, not just the vapor. We'll give it a couple more pumps. Usually you have to pump it a few more times. There it goes. I found that once it gets started, the, the heat kind of helps keep the pressure up. So let's take our, our little mess kit here. Set it here. We don't need it that hot. Okay. So now we're just going to let her cook. I got one more surprise for us. All right, so while that's cooking, we'll take a little break here while I can. This is like a little area here to pull your boat up into. See the posts? You can pull your boat up in here and leave it in the water if you're a camper here at this campground. Like I said, this is called Coleman Landing in Florida. Beautiful little park right on Lake Kissimmee. My dad's over there sitting underneath that over there and that's where we're cooking from. Let me walk down here and try to get a little shot of the lake here real quick while we wait for the... I got just a minute before it starts cooking up pretty good, but they got a four boat landings here it looks like. At least three. There's two right here, two boat ramps side by side, and I think there's two more down there. And there is... 
coming up on the opening to Lake Kissimmee here. They got a nice pavilion area here where some people can uh, picnic right out on this point. There's lots of airboats here. I can hear one coming. But this is a fairly large lake. Lake Kissimmee is. I think I hear it coming. I'm going to pause the video until it gets right here in view. Alright, there it is. another one With this being the weekend there's a lot of them here and there's a shot of the uh, boat trailer parking by a few of them out there So while we're waiting, let me show you my uh, Polish Army bread bag. I've had this in, I think I mentioned already, it was in another video. And in here I brought, forgot to get this out, but this is my 1951, I don't know if you can see that on there. 1951 Polish Army canteen. I brought it full of water. It's made of pure aluminum. And it, it was made to hang off of off of a, uh, a belt or something, but also the bread bag has a nice little pocket right here that fits it perfectly right in there, just like that. And then my mess kit I carried in here, and it's a 1952. Here's the here's the uh, the cup to it, the top, and then of course I got the stuff cooking on the stove over there it's a uh, WZ 20 what is it 2331 is the model number and it's dated 1952 so we got a lot of 1950 stuff here we got a 52 mess kit we got a Coleman stove that was made between 1950 and 53 and we got this old canteen here that was a uh, 1951 <laughs> so the other thing I want to show you is a set of Polish army silverware I have here WP 88 it's a it's got a knife with a bottle opener and can opener on it and then it's got the the marked fork and spoon that had the same markings on the back here. Let's see if I can get that in there. Yep, WP88. So I don't know, maybe it was made in 1988. But there's a nice little pocket here on the side of the bread bag that can fit silverware. I got had it sitting in there when I brought it out. I also brought out my Boy Scout mess kit set silverware set so my dad would have something to eat with. That's a pretty cool little bread bag. It's not waterproof at all, but you can got little spots here. You can put a lighter or different little doodads in pockets here and there. So what I have next for you is we're going to make a little bit of cornbread to go with this. And I brought out uh, in a little cooler right there some milk and an egg. And we are going to do something I've never done before yet, and that's cook it in a US military mess kit. This is my World War I mess kit and pouch inside of here. It's got the uh, markings LD29. I don't know what that means, but it may not be from World War I. It could be newer. 
But inside I have my 100 year old World War I mess kit. And when we open that up, you can see here it says uh, 1918. It's kind of had a double stamp. They stamped it over here too. For some reason. If I can get that in there, it is. 1918. I'm going to use this to bake it in. So I've got a set of World War I silverware. This is a U.S. from World War I. U.S. knife. U.S. fork. A little bit worn, but still nice. And then the, then the spoon. It's got the, it's got the heart looking design on it there we go now it's focused it doesn't like the stuff in the background is messing it up so I think what we're going to do here is so I'm going to bake it in here I'm going to oil this pan and then fold this over and put it in my Coleman camp oven so I think we're going to get started with that here because the, the beans here have already started to simmer so I need to turn that down just a little bit. So it won't be long, those will be done. They're not like dry beans, they're they're uh they're fresh right out of the garden. You know what? I think I'm gonna add, thank you, Pizza Hut, some red pepper flakes to this. I don't know, dress it up pretty good. Just a little bit, not too much. Should put a little spice in there. So this uh, <clears throat> Jiffy cornbread mix calls for one package of mix, one egg, and one uh, one third cup of milk. I forgot to bring something to mix it in. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to just add this stuff in right here in the bag and see what happens it could be it could go wrong I don't know we'll see now they're starting up the airboat again over there all right so the airboat shut off I kind of Mixed the egg up in there a little bit while we were waiting. And here's the milk I brought from home. Pour that in there and just see what happens. I might be able to mix this. I might not. This might go all wrong. I don't know. So it's in there. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to improvise. Seems to be mixing okay. Get some to dry from off the bottom. Yeah, this might work as long as I don't poke a hole in it. All right, so I think I got it got it mixed up pretty good. So I'm going to boil this little pan up here. Put some olive oil and run it around here. We'll help it out here. There we go. Now let's see if we can get this stuff in here. Yeah, that mixed up okay. Might be some dry in the bottom of it. We'll see here. All right, so hopefully I haven't ruined my layer of oil that was on the bottom. But if it is, it is. Let's get the oven ready. All right, so since this burner is controlled by that one, and this one 
takes off of that one, I'm going to have to move this over here for a simmer and then because I need a little higher heat for the Coleman. So, see if I can get this lit without burning myself. Little arm comes out right here. I don't know if you can see it because it's kind of dark. Good, that might help. It's got this little arm that slides out. Okay, it's lit. Okay, so, yep, you can see it on camera, it's lit. I'm going to move this one, this over here. Crank that up to what we need. And adjust this flame down. There we go. That makes way for our Coleman oven here. We'll have to do some adjustment of the flame, but that's what we're gonna do. Oop, I need to turn this down, it's steaming. See the flame now. All right. Gotta wait for it to heat up. All right. I found that when it's around 200 on this uh, on this thermometer, it's about right. So keep it around that, and it'll cook it without burning it. So here's our here's our cornbread. I'm just going. Flip the handle over here and set her in the oven here. I'm going to cook it just like this. Can we, did we get a good shot? Yeah. Hopefully that comes out good. First time I've ever cooked cornbread in a U.S. mess kit, let alone a hundred year old one. Actually, it's a little more than a hundred years. <laughs> Here's our little portable ham radio setup. And, and the way I found him is I was scrolling across the 20 meter band on my Yasu here. You know, I've got the span big enough I can see it all. And sure enough, there, you know, I can see that spike, you know, somewhere like going uh, 300 or something, 14, 300. So this little radio here fits all in this case here. And then we got our coax running out here to just this little homemade antenna out here. This is a 20 meter antenna which can be switched with other types of antennas or talk on other bands. But there it is, just basically a spike in the ground. Spike in the ground there with the, the uh, coax going to it right there, the white coax. And then we got three ground radials laying out here, one going out that way. One going this way, you can barely see it there, and then, then there's one, one right here going out that black wire, and that's what we're using to talk all around the country here from this little. Do you say where he was? In a mountain. In a mountain somewhere. We look here on this uh, scale, we can see where there's other people talking. There's some more down here, let's see what's going on down here. Okay, that was Toronto. Uniform Sierra. Yep, 
November 2, Echo Uniform Sierra, your 59 St. Louis, Missouri. Hmm. Roger, copy 59, 59 into Elmira, New York. Elmira, New York. Operator, New York. Bravo, Alpha, Romeo, Romeo, Yankee. And believe it or not, 95 watts into a wire antenna. Back to you, over. All right, you're good. This is Whiskey Johnny Bravo, Japan in November, calling KQ Salmon Run and listening. KTA, here is Whiskey 7, London, Germany. Whiskey 7, Lima Golf. Okay, the Whiskey 7, Lima Golf, your 59. So you can see there's lots of activity. And we're running off this little battery. And it's portable. We just throw it in the vehicle and go. And we've been making contacts here and just off that little antenna. So it's pretty cool stuff. If you're interested in ham radio, please let me know. Let's check on this cornbread. Oh yeah, let's say that's done. Take this over to the table. Yep, picked them this morning. And inside there's a silverware safe for you. There's some butter. Some real butter. Put some butter on this thing. Mm. And there we have it. Cornbread. We've got some... Uh, Black eyed peas I picked this morning with spam and onions and green pepper and garlic with some red pepper flake. And I think it's uh, dad approved, huh? I heard him go, mm mm. I know we're all in <laughs> Well, let's dig in. All right, so it's not over yet with all this rain dampness. We got to have some coffee. I got this little pan grinder. The beans go right here in the top. Hope you can see that because I can't see the screen. You grind it and the grind fall down here in the bottom. And we're going to be using this old uh, wherever coffee pot. This was, uh, they designed this in the 30s, 1938 I think it was, was when the patent came out. And they built them, they, they stopped building them because they're aluminum during the war. So during World War II they didn't build them. And then they came out with these at the end of the war. So I got a video that I'm going to do the uh, review part of it. But uh, I may insert this into the... Uh, 
that video. Pretty cool old coffee pot and old percolator. So my dad's grinding up the beans now. All right, so we got our coffee down in here. We're going to pour it into this basket. Fresh ground coffee. Now this. Alright, so here we go. This thing's kind of cool because uh, I like that the percolator glass is recessed into this lid. So you can't break it as easy. I think that's kind of cool. There's the water we got in there. Sits right in there like that. It's got a strainer on this side, I guess, so that you can, you know, strain the big pieces. That's pretty big pieces. <laughs> I usually set it like this to block the hole a little bit down here. You turn it like this to pour, I guess, but it'll pour either way. So let's get her over onto the stove. When it starts spitting like that, that's when it's about to come out of there. It saw me jerk away when, as soon as I heard that fuel spitting through there. Oh, it's not quite ready yet. Let me turn the handle back up here. It has to warm up some. It's got to get that generator hot in there. See, it's starting to change. right now. There it's happy now, see? And now let's put this baby up on here. There we go. We got percolation. Nothing like some good hot coffee on a rainy day. Oh, let's have some hot coffee. Oh man. Great color. That's it. Mm -hmm. I have just a bit of creamer in mine, no sugar. It's hot. Take the hide off your tongue with that, boy. <laughs> <clears throat> well, this is where we part ways. We're underneath a another little pavilion here that's right out on this point by the boat landings. We were cooking over there underneath that pavilion. There was a lot of airboats over here earlier, but. I hear another one coming. Two of them. So, so much for the peace and quiet. Thanks for watching today. And uh, hope to see you on another one very soon.